hulle allemaal, ek hoop dit gaan goed. Welkom by vandagse les vir Afrikaans graad 12 eerste additionele taal. Goed, aan die einde van die les sal jy weet hoe om vraagstel 1, afdeling 4, vraag 5 te benader. How to approach paper 1, section 2, question 5. Hoe om een sin in die leidende vorm te skryf? How to write a sentence in the passive voice en hoe om kort infinitief sinne te benader. How to approach short infinitive sentences. Ok, so yesterday we went through direct and indirect speech and I gave you two sentences to do and I would quickly like to look at those two sentences. So if we quickly recap the steps a paar vinnige stappe om sinne na die indirecte rede te verander. Stap 1, onthou, onderstreep die werkwoord. You always have to underline or identify the verb in every single sentence related question you do in language. Stap 2, trak een cirkel om enige voornaamwoord wat verander moet word. You will circle any pronoun. En stap 3, Kijk naar die type sin. Look at the type of sentence. Is dit een spelsin? Is dit een vraagsin? Of is dit een bevelsin? En dan stap 4. Skryf die sin in die indirecte rede. So het ek julle twee sinne gegeen. I gave you two sentences. Skryf die onderstaande twee sinne in die indirecte rede. So kom ons kyk na sin 1. Let's have a look. At sentence 1. Jeremy answered, Ek help jou dagelijks in die huis. Now, unlike yesterday's paper, I have not instructed you how to start these sentences. Um, so, kom ons kyk. Hier, stap 1, identificeer ek my werkwoord. I first identify my verb. Stap 2, Ek trak een cirkel om my voornaamwoorde. I put a circle around the pronouns that are going to change. Remember, you look for the ek, jy, my en jou. En ons sien hierdie is a stelsim. It is still a statement. Even though the word se hasn't been used, the word antwoord still tells us this is. A statement. So now as we go to the kijk, Jeremy answered, we are going to use dat, but it is a spelsin. Hy, haar, dagelijks in die huis, help. My verb has moved to the end, and I've changed both my pronouns. Since two years, Jeremy se ma se, jy maak my baie kwaad. Once again, Step 1, ek soek my werkwoord, dis maak, ok, dis my woord, en ek trak een cirkel om my voornaamwoorde wat gaan verander. And I put a cirkel around the pronoun that can change, ons kyk weer, hierdie is ook a selfing, is also a statement, so my antwoord sal dan weer Jeremy se ma sê dat hy haar baie kwaad maak. Okay, my verb is moved to the end and I have changed both my pronouns. Ok, so let's have a look at the light in the forum question that I left out yesterday because I wanted to do it in a bit more detail. So kom ons kyk na die vraag. Let's have a look at the question. Dit sê Skryf die sin oor in die leidende vorm. Jou pa sal jou vanavond vastvat. Begin so, jy. Okay. Now this is already confusing because of the pronoun you in the object state. Maar kom ons kyk. There are a few easy steps to approach leidende vorm. Stap 1, verdeel jou sin in stompie. You have to divide your sentence into stompie because by doing that, 
you can actually not get this answer wrong in the exam. Even though you might find it a frustrating question, if you can divide your sentence into stompy, it will help you a lot. Sub suya. Bepaldi tijdsvorm van die sin. Determine the tense of the sentence. That is also extremely important. And dan pas die real to. Apply the rule. Now in class you would have been learnt various ways of remembering this. I have my own way of teaching late in the forum. You can use it if you prefer the one that you've been taught in class, that is also perfectly fine. Maar kom ons kijk. Ek sê vir my kinders, I tell my children, vat die woord stompie en skryf dit in a fear. So you take the word stompie and you write it in the form of a V. And then you just make sure you have your K and V and your infinitive there. So I've got stompie. Right, now, Kaiko, there are 10 steps that you need to take, um, that you can take into consideration when doing Leiden the Forum. So, step 1, I've numbered them. You can begin with your underwear. So, after you have divided the given sentence into stompies, you have determined the tense, you are now going to apply this rule to write your sentence into the light in the forum. So, we gaan begin met stap 1, where we start with the object. Step 2, we've now determined the tense of the given sentence. So, depending on the tense, if the sentence is in the present tense, you will write down the word word after the object. If the sentence given to you in the exam paper is in the past tense, you will write down the word if after the object. And if the sentence given to you is in the future tense, you will write down after the object self. If the sentence given has a moot or a can, then you will write moot or can after the object. Now you go back to your sentence and you have a look. Look if there is a time word in the sentence. Okay, it's optional. It doesn't have to be in the sentence. That's why I put it in brackets. So now after the verb that you've written, you will put your time word. Then you have a look. Does the sentence have a manner in it? If it doesn't have a manner, you won't write down anything. That is also optional. Next, you would put down the word dear. After dear, you will write your subject. Now, sometimes in a sentence, you have a section starting with the preposition fir on me. Ek skryf fir Jan a brief met a pen of ek skryf on my carol. Then you are not sure where these things should go. Um, then it will come after the subject. Your object can never ever have a preposition. If you are starting your light in the forum with something that has a preposition, it is wrong. Okay, so that is extremely important. Nothing standing in the object position can start with a preposition. Okay, and then after you've now um, written down your subject, you've checked if there is anything starting with fir on me, you have a look to see if there is place in the sentence. If there is, you will then write it down. Now, very important is step 9. You will then add 
to the verb. And if the sentence is in the future tense, you will also add the word word after you've added fit to the verb. But this is only for the future tense, the word here. Yeah? And then lastly, if your sentence has an infinitive, you will write that next. Now, remember on how. As daar nie een voorwerp, een object, en een sin is nie, begin jou sin met daar. If there is no object in the given sentence, you will start with daar. Also remember, as jou onderwerp, subject, een persoonlijke voornaamwoord is, verander dit in die leidende vorm. If your subject is a personal pronoun, it changes in the leidende form. So if I have ek, it becomes dear my. If I've got jy, it becomes dear jou. And if I've got sy, it becomes dear haar. And hy, dear hom. Let's have a look at that given sentence. Good. So step one. I divide my sentence into stompy. Jou fa is subject. Sal is always verb one. Jou is the object. Finan is time. Look, it's not standing in its normal place. Okay, usually we say your fa is often non, your fast fat, but now it's standing here after the object. And then fast fat is verb two. Step two, determine the tense. The tense of the sentence, sal fast fat, is telling us that it is to come in the site. Now you apply that rule that I've given you. So you're going to start with the object. They've already given you guidance. Yeah, so you're going to say the ye is the same as yo. It's not just standing first in the sentence. I'm starting with my. Um, object, yai. Next, I write down the verb applicable to the tense. In this case, it is sal. I have a look. Does my sentence have a time word? Yes, it does. So I write down final. Does my sentence have manner? No. Next, step five, I write down dear. Then I write step six. My subject, yo far. I have a look. Is there anything starting with fir on met? No. Is there a place? No. Now I need to remember step nine. I need to add ch to the verb. And because this is a future tense sentence, I need to add the verb at the end. Now, fast, fast is a tricky verb because it's a verb that splits up in the present tense and then because it is a dilti verkwoord, it's a skybare verkwoord, and the g is going to go between fast and fast. Okay, so jy sal vernaan, dier jou pa, fast, 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 voor. Okay, so that, in a nutshell, is how you approach laden the forum in an exam. Let's have a look at the rest of paper one, section C, question five. Okay, so yes, on Monday, Tuesday, sorry, we went through the advertisement, how to approach the advertisement. We realized that six out of the 10 marks of the language questions and were based on the advertisement and its interpretation. Yesterday, we did the um, cartoon question, question four, and we also realized that five out of the ten questions were based on the interpretation of the cartoon. Now, with question five, usually it is purely language-based Question. And it says here, Vraag 5, artikel en 3, 
we've got an article of some sort and there's 14 marks based on the article and then we've got a print, we've got a picture that is worth six marks and that often is based on vocab and they often ask the preposition question there because you have a look at the picture and what's going on in the picture. Now let's look at the instructions for question five. It says, text a article. I told you this text is the article. Now it says, the taal vraag wat volgt is op die tijdschrift artikel gebaseerd. Voer die instructies by elke vraag uit. So it says the language question that are going to follow is based on this um, magazine article. Follow the instructions um, at each question. Now, if you struggle to finish your paper one, you do not have to read this specific article. The article is given to you as background to the question. However, if you are a slow reader, rather just read the title and the introductory sentence and then go on to the language question. It saves you a lot of time, time that can be better used by answering the comprehension or spending a few extra minutes on answering the summary where you can also gain a lot of marks. So this is literally just given to you as background to the question. Usually in any case, the questions um, are mentioned in the um, article. You can see it might say 1 point or 5.1 here, Kevin Ramalassi, and then you'll see it has something related to that um, number or something like that. However, you really don't have to read this article. So let's just get a vague idea by reading the title, reading the introductory sentence. Schoen Phyllis Blicke is next the eerste stop. Okay, so clean dustbin is just the first step. Seven Ramalassi, 17, maak Phyllis Blicke schoen, omdat hy nog altyd a sake man wil lees en sy leeste is a mens met ewers begin. So it says Kevin Ramalassi, 17, and clean Dustin because he's always wanted to be a businessman and his motto, leeste, is a person has to start somewhere. Okay, so you've got a vague idea. It's about Kevin Ramalassi, he's cleaning Dustin, he wants to be a businessman, and you need to start somewhere in life if you want to start your own business. That is more than enough to give you background to the questions that are to follow. Okay, so the first question says, Skryf die sin oor in die infinity. A mens moet ewers begin, and then it says, begin soe, a mens begin. So it tells us, write the sentence in the infinite and they tell you how to start. Now, the fourth infinity, the short infinite. Few steps. Stop in, identifier your verbwoord or verbwoord. Okay. Every single sentence you do in Afrikaans, when it comes to language, you need to be able to identify your verb or verb. So in this case, our verbs are moot and begin. Stop to hear. As the sin, the verb word moot is. Straak a kruistadier. So I say if the sentence has an auxiliary verb like moot, Cross it out. You cannot have the word and mood in the same sentence. The word is taking the place of the mood. 
Once you've done that, everything else stays the same. You just need to put a step in front of verb 2 and only a step. So let's look at the answer. Following the step, I've identified my verb. I've crossed out the mood. So now I write a mean, the word evash. I must remember my set begin. Okay, that means the word evash the begin. Okay, this is an easy mark to get. In an exam paper, the biggest mistake that you guys make is that because you see the word infinity, you think you need to add a or. I've written here on how sinner met the word krainie. Right. If you are writing a sentence in the infinitive and it is starting with the word, it will not get a all. Okay. I cannot tell you how many times I mark a paper and everything is done correctly and then you decide to put the om in front of the t because it's been drilled into you since primary school infinitive also plus the verb not with the word sentences okay it's actually called the fourth infinity the short infinitive because there is no or okay that is extremely important and um, it's actually quite nice to get a sentence that does have an auxiliary verb because that means my verb 2 is already in the correct position. I don't have to move it anywhere in the sentence. If my sentence was, for example, a main begin ivers, I will follow the same steps with the exception of step 2. So what's going to happen now, I identify my verb, I identify my verb, which is going to be begin, my verb then has to move to the end of the sentence and I will then add a to. So my answer will be the same as this answer. Okay, so it's still going to be a means for word ivers de begin. But it is nice if you do get a sentence with one of the auxiliary verbs because then you just have to cross it out and you have to remember to put the to in front of verb 2. And remember, no or. That is the most important thing to know when it comes to the word sentences. Right. Okay, now question 5.2 asks, Schrijf die onderwerp van die sin neer, schrijf slecht die vraagnummer en die antwoord neer. Okay, so, then the question, the sentence is, The tiener van Melbourne maak willikie vullislikke skoon. Nou sê ek jy onthou, remember, jou onderwerp is your subject. Jou voorwerp is your object. Now they do like asking this question because your immediate assumption is you see onderwerp, and in your mind you go, oh, that must be the object because it's also starting with the O. No, it is not. It is very important to remember, onerwerp is your subject and voorwerp is your object. Now, in this sentence, once again, look for the verb. If you can find the verb, it just makes it so much easier to actually identify your subject and object. So here it on mark school. Okay, so mark school is our um, verb. Squin mark. Mark school. Okay. So now we have a look. My subject on our verb always stands in front of my verb one. Okay, my normal stompy rule says it's subject Verb 1. Okay. Onerwerp. Verb 1. So, there are two possible answers that you can write down that would have gotten you the mark in this section. 
You could have written the Tiener van Melbourne or if you just wrote the Tiener, it would have gotten you the mark. It depends on how you saw or interpreted this question. So, the mark will be Phyllis Lickerskoen. The Tiener. Or it could also be the mark will be Phyllis Lickerskoen. The Tiener van Malvern. Okay, so this is also very important to remember. Good. Now that I have a portion of this in your I've written down four sentences that I would like you to attempt for tomorrow's lesson. So, I say, write the four hundred three sentences in the line the forum. Write the following two sentences in the passive voice. Sin 1, die metriek het vandag baie waar geleer. En sin 2, tieners eet dagelijk baie kort. And then, I've given you two sentences. Skryf die onderstaande twee sinne oor in die fourth infinitive. I would like you to write them into the infinite the mighty mutter ma in the house house and your staff like have indicated in brackets begin sue the mighty the word and the next sentence we see an eat alka dach all the bird up begin sue the seen the word right so those are four sentences at the start of tomorrow's lesson, I will be going through these as a quick revision on today's lesson to see how you have managed those questions. So, so what did we learn today? What did we learn today? The Leidende Forum, we paid attention to the passive voice. That is three steps. Step in, verdeel die sin in stompy. We divide the sentence into stompy. Step 2, the fall the tense van die sin. You have to determine if it is written in the present, past or future tense. In step 3, you apply the rule. Whatever rule it is that you were taught. You can use my one where you take the word stompy, you write it in a V and you follow the tense step. Or if you have been taught object plus, word is, sal plus, time, that is also fine. Any rule that works for you, and um, you can use. And then let us look at the fourth infinity. We had a look at the short infinity. And there is also a look at step 1, which was on the strip the word word. You have to underline the word. Step 2, all the moot out. You had to cross out the auxiliary verb, moot. And I get to say on how the court infinity crimea or moot. And I once again remind you that the short infinity does not get a all, only a sir. Right, now in more of the lesson, we'll have the following case. In tomorrow's lesson, we are going to have a look at the following. We are still busy with question 5 of section C of your paper 1. And we are specifically going We are especially going to pay attention to conjunctions. How to start with group 3, three conjunctions to begin, how to start with group 3 conjunctions, the negative, we are going to have a look at the negative, as well as deal with it. Those are your past and present participles. You do seem to struggle with those ones, and I would like to pay some attention to the participles in tomorrow's lesson. Guys, I would like to thank you for joining me for today's lesson. I hope you have a lovely day, and then I will see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, at 8 o'clock. Please follow us on our various social media. I look forward to seeing you again 
tomorrow morning. Bye guys!